So today's lesson is going to be titled Marbury versus Madison Judicial Review. So make sure that you update that table of contents and that you get your Cornell notes ready for today. It's page 69. So go ahead, press pause while you get that done. And then when you're ready, press play and we'll continue with the lesson. Today, we're going to be going over a Supreme Court case. Today's court case is titled Marbury versus Madison. So in order to find out, well, what happened in this Supreme Court case? Why did they decide? Why did Marbury decide to sue Madison? And what precedents did it set? We're going to have to start with John Adams, who is our second president of the United States. So how did he become president? In 1796, there was an election for second president. John Adams, who's a Federalist, ran against Thomas Jefferson, a Democratic Republican. And John Adams won. Here you see the electoral votes and how John Adams won most of the electoral votes. So he won. He became our second president of the United States. However, he's only president for one term. And how many years is that? Four years. Go ahead and take, take down your notes. So after four years in pre as president, not a lot of things happened. Yes, he is still trying to stay neutral between the war that's going on uh, between France and Britain. So he's still trying to stay neutral during that time. Uh, they are disrupting our trade, all of that. But during the second election for president, he runs against Thomas Jefferson again. This time, Thomas Jefferson wins and Jefferson ends up becoming the third president. But between the time of him, Adams, being president and Jefferson being president, something really important happens, okay? And so we're going to find out what does John Adams do the night before he, he stops being president. So it's that night that's his last night as president. And he ends up doing something really shady that ends up causing uh, a court case, a Supreme Court case, which is Marbury versus Madison. What happened at the end of Adams' presidency? It is the last day of John Adams' presidency. He is a Federalist and a Democratic Republican has won. That means when Jefferson becomes president, there's going to be a shift in power in government. No longer are the rich, federalist, strong federal government, yes, national bank, right? No longer are they going to be in power. Now the people in power, Jefferson, Democratic Republicans, uh, focus on agriculture, pro-French, uh, no national bank, all of those are now going to be in power. So Adams, it's the night before his last day of being president, and Adams keeps thinking, how can I do it so that our Federalist Party still has some power in government? And this is what he decides. He has a great plan. He's at night. It's, at, it's night. He's in his room and he's thinking, what can I do? And what he decides to do is he says, you know what? As president, I still have the power to appoint judges. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of my homeboys, 47 friends, and I'm going to assign them to be judges. Now I'm going to have 47 Federalists in power. And so obviously very shady what he does. And so he starts writing these appointments, which are also known as commissions. He tells one of his friends, hey, Marbury, I'm going to make you a judge too. Just remember, you're a Federalist. So when you are making decisions, stay focused on what Federalists believe and want. And so he's like, awesome, great. I'll be waiting for my commission, the paperwork, right, that officially makes him a judge. James Madison is in charge of delivering those commissions. James Madison is a Democratic Republican. He goes to Thomas Jefferson and he says, hey, yo, Adams wants me to do this. There's 47 of them. Do I do it? And Jefferson says, no, don't deliver those commissions. And so James Madison follows those orders and he doesn't deliver those commissions. Marbury spends the whole night waiting for those, that paperwork and he never receives it. And so Marbury, when he realizes what happened, 
he gets very upset and he calls out Madison and he says, yo, that's illegal. You can't stop me from being a judge. Adams was still president of the United States. And he says, you know what? I'm going to sue you. And so this lawsuit goes all the way to the Supreme Court where you have your nine Supreme Court judges. So let's go back to what the Supreme Court is, okay? The Supreme Court is one of the three branches of government known as the judicial branch. Think about it, judicial judges. And there are nine judges during this time. Their job is to solve problems between the states or between the people and the states, right? And so court cases go all the way to the Supreme Court. Every case, when it gets there, gets a name. In this case, it is called Marbury versus Madison because Marbury is suing Madison for not delivering the commissions, the paperwork. So go ahead and press pause as you write this down. And remember, m and &M, Marbury versus Madison. So in the Supreme Court, there is a chief justice, so someone basically in charge of the other judges, and his name is John Marshall, and he receives the lawsuit that says Marbury versus Madison, and he reads over what the law lawsuit is, and he starts to question, what is my job as a justice for the Supreme Court? What is our job description in our Supreme Court. Remember, this is the first time in the history of America that they're getting a lawsuit all the way up to the Supreme Court. And he says, I need to look at the Constitution and see what our job is, what I need to do about it, right? He needs to figure out what is our job? What is our authority? What do we have the power to do? And he says, well, the Constitution says that we have the power to interpret laws to basically see the law and find out if the people or the states broke the law. Congress, nor the president, nor the states can tell the Supreme Court what to do or how to do it. It is their job to interpret the Constitution. So he says, we, John Marshall says, we have the power to review or check to see if maybe a law that Congress did goes against our constitution, or maybe an executive action goes against our constitution. So they have the power to declare a law constitutional, meaning it goes with it, or unconstitutional, it goes against it. And so he said, hey, that is called judicial review. We are reviewing and figuring out if something is constitutional or unconstitutional. He came up with a, their job description and their job is judicial review, okay? They get to check the exec, remember checks and balances. They get to check the executive branch, which is our president and say, hey, that action, it's unconstitutional. Or hey, Congress, the ones that make laws, that law you made, it's unconstitutional. Let me give you an example. If Congress decides to make a law that says everyone must pray for three hours a day, the Supreme Court is going to get that law, they're going to get the Constitution, and they're going to review it. And what do you think they're going to say? Yo, wait a minute. The Bill of Rights says we have freedom of religion. This law you just made, it's unconstitutional. That is judicial review. Okay, that is judicial review. And because of this court case, because it was the first time they were getting a court case in the Supreme Court, they realized our job is judicial review. Our job is to review the constitutionality of an executive action, which is a president, or Congress, a law. So we have the power of judicial review. Go ahead and write this down. Press pause and then press play when you're ready to continue. So you're probably thinking, well, what happened with Marbury? Did, did he win the lawsuit? Did he not? And long story short, no, Marbury didn't win. Sorry, stop crying. You're not going to be a judge. The bigger idea, the big thing they got out of it was the fact that they learned what their job was going to be. 
Because of Marbury versus Madison, they learned that their job is judicial review. And we're going to remember this by saying M&M Juniors, Marbury versus Madison, judicial review, and the S under Juniors is the Supreme Court, okay? Judicial review is what the Supreme Court does. So go ahead and write judicial review on the left-hand side. And it means the Supreme Court can determine if laws or actions are constitutional or unconstitutional. Press pause while you complete this. So now if we look at checks and balances and you see the judicial branch down here, it has the power now to declare laws, see, determine whether laws are constitutional or unconstitutional. Or they can check the executive branch and declare executive actions, which are presidential actions, either constitutional or unconstitutional. If the legislative branch makes a new law, no guns allowed, right? No more guns in the United States. It's going to go to the Supreme Court. They're going to take out the Constitution. They're going to get that new law and they're going to review. And what do you think they're going to find out? What are they going to determine? this new law? Is it going to be constitutional or unconstitutional? It's unconstitutional because what amendment gives us the right to bear arms? The second amendment. So this law that Congress just made, it's unconstitutional. And that is the Supreme Court's job, the judicial branch's job. And it's called judicial review. And we learned how to do this under Mar Marbury versus Madison. So here is our summary for this lesson. Because of Marbury versus Madison, what it did, it established the constitutional principle of judicial review. They learned, oh, our job is to review the Constitution. So now on the back of your notes, which is page 69, I want you to draw this out. This is everything you need to know about today's lesson, all right? It happened in 1803. Then I need you to draw a giant C, and the C represents two things. It was Chief Justice John Marshall who did this, right, who established this principle, and what it did was it allowed us to figure out the constitutionality of a law. Is the law constitutional or unconstitutional. So you're going to draw that. Inside that C, you're going to put M and M juniors. All right. And under the M, the first M, it's Marbury. The second one is Madison. And the juniors stands for judicial review in the Supreme Court. So behind page 69, you're going to draw this out. All right. When you're done, we're going to move on to this next activity. Okay. And in this activity, what you're going to do is you're going to be a Supreme Court judge, just like John Marshall and John Marshall. I want you guys to look at some of the bullet points about him. He promoted the public good. He maintained a strong sense of duty. He used clear language to discuss complex issues. And look at this last part. He wrote the Supreme Court decision that established the principle of judicial review. So judicial review is the power of the Supreme Court to judge laws and to declare them to be constitutional or unconstitutional. Constitutional means that the law follows or agrees with the Constitution. It doesn't violate it. And unconstitutional is that the law conflicts with or goes against the Constitution. Just like I mentioned earlier, if they make a law that says no guns allowed, it goes against our Constitution. The Bill of Rights has a Second Amendment. So that law would be unconstitutional. Directions. You are the Supreme Court. Judge the laws below and write constitutional or unconstitutional in the small blank. Explain your answer by referring to the Bill of Rights. So you should, number one, look at it. New law. Citizens may not purchase or possess assault rifles, only handguns. Is this constitutional or unconstitutional? What do you think? We're going to do number one together. Let's think about it. Is there somewhere in the Constitution that talks about guns and weapons? We have the Second Amendment. And it says we have the right to bear arms. And so here it's telling us we don't. So this law would be considered unconstitutional. 
Why? You're going to put a number two and then you're going to write the right to bear arms. Okay. You're going to write a number two and you're going to put the right to bear arms. And that's what you're going to do from two to eight all the way down. Okay. But before we leave, let's answer these questions right here. In Marbury versus Madison, the Supreme Court established a principle that would eventually be used by all courts to F strike down any law that the court deems unconstitutional G decide the outcome of contested election results H overturn any impeachment that the court deems unsupported by evidence or J mediate disputes related to commerce between states. So think about what we said with Marbury versus Madison. It's the giant C M and M juniors, right? So what can, what did Marbury versus Madison do? Go ahead and answer that. You should have answered F strike down any law that the court deems unconstitutional. Next question. The decision in Marbury versus Madison was significant in us history because it, so remember M and M juniors, right? The giant C. F, reinforced federal authority over American Indian affairs. G, confirmed the power of Congress to regulate interstate commerce. H, established the practice of judicial review by the Supreme Court. Or J, upheld the power of the Electoral College to choose the vice president. Go ahead and answer that. We should have answered H, judicial review by the Supreme Court. M and M juniors. John Marshall promoted the public good, maintained a strong sense of duty, used clear language to discuss complex issues, complex issues. Which action should be added to this list? If we had to add something else about John Marshall, what would we add? Remember, we have the giant C, M and M juniors, the giant C, Chief Justice John Marshall. Which action should be added to the list? Is it A, upheld the doctrine of states' rights? B, supported the popular election of the Supreme Court justices? C, allowed slavery to extend into Western territories? Or D, wrote the Supreme Court decision that established the principle of judicial review? We should have all answered D, wrote the Supreme Court decision that established the principle of judicial review. Next question, which precedent was established by the Supreme Court ruling in Marbury versus Madison? Is it A, the federal government has the power to regulate trade among the states? B, state governments lack the authority to regulate federal bureaus? C, federal courts determine the constitutionality of a law? Or D, state courts lack the authority to hear cases challenging federal law? We should have all answered C, federal courts determine the constitutionality of a law. Remember, the giant C, M and M juniors, and the giant C stands for Chief Justice John Marshall and constitutionality of a law. So that wraps up the lessons for today. Make sure that you do create the C with the M and M juniors, so the back of page 69, and that we complete the the handout where you declare a law to be constitutional or unconstitutional thank you so much for your time guys and we'll see you later